what Satan does is it disperses people by getting them to think that they are from a different race. The reality is there's only one race and it's called the human race. And within that human race, there are many colors. You see, there's only one rainbow. Within that rainbow, there are many colors. Again, don't forget, there's only one race. It is the human race. And within this race, there are many colors. This is the purpose of the rainbow. is to show us that we are one race with many colors to show the glory of God. Guys, welcome back to this channel. This is the Open Veil TV back with the last video on the story of Noah. So, last time I did mention I made a mistake when I said part 3, but actually it is part 2 of chapter 9. Uh, it's no, there is no part 3 because I'm gonna finish it today. And I think after today, um it will be it will be the last um video on the topic of the flood or Noah basically the flood. Not really Noah, but you get the point. I'm talking about the story of Noah but the flood. Um because there's stories of Noah after the flood. So without further ado Let's stop where we actually left off. Genesis chapter 9 and we said we were going to start number 12 and what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to start in verse number 11 even though I said number 12 number 11 and I will establish my covenant with you neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of the flood neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I made I make with between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. And last time we looked at that term, perpetual generation, it means until the end of time. And what does that actually imply? It means even my generation goes by, another generation comes up, the rainbow is still going to be there. Because it is a covenant. The reason it is a worldwide covenant is because after God destroyed the earth, only Noah and his family remained. Which means when God made that covenant to Noah and his children, then he made it to the whole earth, to the whole planet earth. So this is why we are all descendant of Noah, even though we might have different skin color. Don't forget that part. Let's move on. Verse number 13. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Okay? And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And if you look at right now, if you actually look, every time it rains, every time it rains for a long period of time, after a while, what do you see appears in the cloud? A bow. We call it a rainbow. But God said, I will I do set my bow on the cloud. And last time we touched on the bow on the rainbow briefly because it was it wasn't the essential of the story at that time. But now 
we are going to talk about the rainbow. And you, you know that the rainbow has seven colors. And I'm going to come back to that. Because uh, now, the colors mean something. The, color, the colors of the rainbow, they mean something. And I'm not going to get to what the colors actually mean. But I'm going to talk about what the rainbow means. So, the rainbow, it simply means a covenant that there will be no more flood to destroy the whole earth. Actually, let me let me just show it to you from here. Verse number 14, And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud, and I will, and I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So, what 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 is the rainbow? What is the purpose of the rainbow? Is to remind us that God is no longer going to destroy the whole earth and all living flesh with water. That's what it means. Now, now let's move on, and because we have something better to get into right now. Verse 16, And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, This is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. So, You probably think, okay, so we get the story, then why don't you end the video? Well, we are, we're going to talk about the rainbow, because there is something about the rainbow people um, that people don't know where it comes from, and, and how it is being misused today. Now, where does the rainbow come from? I won't tell you right now. Let me tell you that the rainbow didn't just appear out of nowhere. The rainbow is from a place. And what we're going to be looking is exactly where else. Now, the, the word rainbow only appears in the Bible two times. And both times it's in Revelation chapter 4 and chapter 10. In the book of Genesis, God talks about, I'm going to put a bow in the cloud. And also we're going to look at Ezekiel, which talks about the bow. But the term rainbow actually appears two times. It's in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 10. And let's see where it actually originates. The Bible tells us, I'm going to make this one a bit bigger. The Bible tells us, chapter 4, verse number 2 to number 4, and immediately I was in the spirit, you know, I was in the spirit, this is John speaking, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat on the, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone, and there was a rainbow round about the throne in the sight like unto an emerald and or in verse number four and round and round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white women. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. So, 
Where does the rainbow originate? Um, it originates from the throne of God. Literally, the rainbow is right over God's head. In chapter 10 as well, um, let me let me let me go quickly. Chapter 10 as well tells us the same thing about the rainbow, but this time it talks about Jesus Christ. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire, and he made rest. What that means is, um, this mighty angel, in fact, um, is not an angel. This is the archangel. Because in chapter 1 of, of Revelation, John described Jesus as feet of pillar uh, of brass, eyes of fire. And Isaiah also talks about the appearance of Jesus Christ. This angel that you are talking about right here with the um, face as it were the sun, this is Jesus Christ. And of course, there is somebody that used to be in heaven, that used to be around that rainbow day in and day out, and now wants to use that rainbow and misuse it. And and what do we see now as a, if you were to go ask anybody outside, what does the rainbow mean? It would tell you it is the pride flag. And I'm going to put it that way. Most of the people from the pride um, uh, parade or any of that, they don't really understand what they are doing when they, when they take the rainbow. But actually, they don't have a rainbow flag because the rainbow has seven colors. Well, in fact, the pride flag has six colors. So it's not technically a rainbow. If you think about it. But what Satan has done is Satan's number is six. Satan's number is six. So, of course, when it is a rainbow, which is complete, has seven colors, to make it for him, he has to remove a color. You know, that's why the pride flag has six colors. Nothing against the pride people, but that is what the reality is. What they call the rainbow flag for them is not actually a rainbow. Because the rainbow has seven colors and not six. At least seven colors we can see and not six. Now, I did mention about Ezekiel. And that's where we're going to finish today. Let's talk about Ezekiel and, and see exactly about um, that bow. Because um, there is something about in, in the bow that we have to understand. Ezekiel chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse number 26. Ezekiel chapter 1. And start in number 26. Or verse 26. And it says, And above the firmament that was over their heads. Now if you want to, if you want to read the whole chapter, Go ahead and do that, but I'm just gonna start from verse number 26. I mean, I'm not taking anything out of context. If you think I would do, I did go back to chapter two, verse number one and read the whole context and see what I did or what, what happened. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne and the appearance of a sapphire stone, and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. And that man actually is Jesus Christ. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within, from the appearance of his loins, even 
upward and from the appearance of his loins even downward. And I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about it, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain. So, this is where the term rainbow comes in. You see, it says, as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness around about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God, and when I saw it, I fell on my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. So, what is the what is now we we just found out that the rainbow is a covenant between God and the earth or in all generation of all flesh on the earth that he will no longer destroy the earth with water. But what is the meaning of the rainbow in a sense now? It is the glory of the Lord. Um so the glory of the Lord is like the rainbow. Okay, let's see let's see it again. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. So, when you look at the rainbow, what it should remind you of is not only that God will no longer destroy the earth with water, but it should remind you of the glory of the Lord. And so, what is that glory of the Lord? What was what is the what is God's glory about? Well, God's glory about is about um, people being together. We were created. We were created to to show the glory of God. Now, now, let's put it this way. When you look at Adam and Eve, God, what happened was, they were the first humans, and there was, and this was the first human being. Adam and Eve were the first human beings. Okay. And then, because of, after the flood, the people started to build a tower of people, God dispersed them throughout the earth, throughout the earth. And based on the locations that they were, their skin color changed. This is micro evolution. Their skin color changed, their facial um changed, their faces changed of course, the way that they look changed. That's why we have people from Asia looking a different way, people from the Europe, from America and Africa and around uh, the continent right now. And so God created um so when Satan looks at people and makes people think that um oh if you are Asian you are from this race, if you are white, you are from this race race, if you are black, you're from this race. And if you're Hispanic, this is this race. If you're from the Middle East, you're from this race. Or you're that race. What Satan does is, it disperses people by getting them to think that they are from a different race. The reality is, there's only one race. And it's called the human race. And within that human race, there are many colors. You see, there's only one rainbow. Within that rainbow, there are many colors. And the rainbow, which represents, which should be representing the glory of the Lord, is the same way within that human race that God created to represent His glory. There are many colors. Once the colors come, uh, come together and live in unison, that will show the glory of the Lord. But because we have been taught that there are many races, 
then we look at each other as you are a stranger, you are not part of my race. When we see that, when we look at each other and say we are one race, then you would not hear about a cop putting his knee on another person until he dies. Because, and the reason why that person could do that is because one is white, one is black, and they look at each other, you are in a different race. So the moment we stop, we stop looking at races in the lens of Satan, but of God, maybe we're going to have a better life. Because as long as we are looking at a person with a different skin color, as a different race, then there's going to be always a fight. We are always going to fight each other and we will never be able to show the glory of God. So, what is the... And I'm going to make, I'm going to make it simple. The first racist basically is Satan. Because Satan's objective is none other than destroy the human race. Don't forget, there's only one race, the human race. Within that race, there are many colors. There's only one race. Between that and in that race, there are many colors. If we see each other as one race, then we are more likely to live along with each other than looking at each other with, oh, you are in a different race. So let us stop looking at um, race, racial profile through the lens of Satan, but through the lens of the Bible and how God designed it. Because the more we do that, there are many problems that we will be able to solve. Guys, this was TOV. That was the last topic on the story of Noah. And of course, we ended with the rainbow. And um, next story, I don't know. It will be coming soon. But hopefully by next week, I will come up with a different story. Again, don't forget, there's only one race. It is the human race. And within this race, there are many colors. This is the purpose of the rainbow, is to show us that we are one race with many colors to show the glory of God. This was TOV, the Open World TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then, bye for now.